Hey guys, Sepco Soccer Pro. Today we're doing a oil change and transmission change on a Honda CRF 150R. These bikes are sweet. They love to rev and scream. This one's in really good shape. And let me show you what's going on here. It's leaking oil, right? but if you look underneath and you look at the O-ring for the filter, you can kind of see it in that picture right there. Let me, you can see it bulging out right there. See that? All right, so the O-ring got pinched in here. It's been leaking oil, so we're going to change that. Uh, pretty simple process, oil filter uh, on the engine side and transmission fluid on the other. All right, so there's two drain bolts on these, so don't get confused. Uh, on this side here, right, even though you're changing your filter here, the drain bolt right there, right, that one is going to be for the transmission side. That's for the other side, and the one for the engine oil is going to be right there. So that's your engine oil underneath all right, and then your transmission side is here. This is our engine side fill, and the other side is our transmission fill. I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here's the fill for the engine side, and this is our fill for our transmission side. All right, so this is our uh, transmission side drain bolt. You don't want to strip this out because this is all the way through to the other side where this thing threads in. So it's a big deal if you strip these and have to re-tap them, so don't strip these, okay? But this is the one that comes out of the side right here, right back in there. And this is our engine side drain bolt. I put the crush washer, it looks like it got stuck up in there. So I'm gonna have to get that out. Let's pull this cap off. All right, so our front guard off, you can see that better now. You can see that gasket sticking out of there. That's gonna leak like crazy, so. All right, so two bolts for the filter. Long one goes in the top, short one goes in the bottom. Let's see the solar ring. Yep, jammed up. All right, new parts here. There's a new O-ring, and here's our new filter. Let's replace it. Make sure you look in here for any metal debris and stuff when you're doing your oil change, and this one's really good. It has no problems. All right, so put some fresh oil all over that O-ring before you put it in, and the spring right here, it's deep enough in here. I put a little bit of oil in there to help stick it, but it's deep enough you can put this oil filter pretty far over and it's not going to fall out so if you're worried about that just lean the bike back towards you a little bit but slowly put it in there i wish there was more of a chafing on these but it's not it's kind of still a little bit sharp but just take your time getting it in there i think that washer that was in there i'm sorry the o-ring was the wrong one that one seems a little bit thicker so it might have been just the wrong one put in so we're just going to put this one back in and see how it goes all right so you got three holes up in here one here one there one there these three holes right here all right, go this way. There's another hole right here. That one just opens up and dumps oil into here. So just take it just like this. All right, and then here, you just want to get to where the O-ring is. Push it in just like that. Then when you get it in there, hold it, okay, so that's not going to come out, things are not going to move around. Go ahead and spin your eights back in here. You don't want the o you don't want to come in and out with the O-ring and cause any unwanted damage. These are really low foot pounds. Right, looking good. I'm gonna put the cover back on here and put the uh, drain bolts back in. All right, so here are the crush washers. You can see this one's damaged there, and this one is just completely deformed. These are made to crush and help seal. All right, so you don't want to put these back in. Make sure you get new ones. This one was kind of stuck in there, and I have to get it out of there. But, you know, I made that video about don't be a hack mechanic. When you come across these things, fix them. Put new ones in. Okay, do it right. So I got new washers going in there. Let's put them back in. All right, for the engine side, we're doing 590 cc. Remember with this side, you can start it up afterwards after you do the transmission side and um, you got oil on both sides. Fire it up, warm it up, let it sit for a few minutes, and then check it with the dipstick. But for right now, we're just going to put in the 
what the manual says is 590. And I'm using the GN4 10W40. Clutch side, same oil. But we're doing 580 in here. Now the engine side, you can do 560 if you're just doing an oil change without the filter. They go a little slower on this side because the clutch is right there. All right, guys, with both sides filled up, this job is complete. New filter, new O-ring, new uh, drain plug, uh, crush washers, and fresh oil in there. All right, so after you get everything together, make sure you start the bike up, run it, check your dipstick. With the dipstick on these Hondas, the bike needs to be level and not screwed in. So you're going to unscrew it and just put it back in there and uh, check your level like that, and that's it. Now, these four-strokes, guys... They're awesome bikes, but if you run them low on oil, they will let you know by a very expensive repair bill. Trust me on this one, and, and if you don't get anything out of this video, get this. Check your oil regularly. Make sure it stays fresh at the right level. Don't run your oil low on these bikes, any of these four strokes, any of these big 450s and 250s. You don't want to run them low, man. They will, they will eat themselves up. So hopefully this helps you out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell for further notifications. Until next time, this is Tepco Cycle Repair.